Let's, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report. He comes out with a new issue every Monday, uh, updates throughout the week when warranted. You get access to a 60-minute webinar he did with subscribers talking about Forex strategies and fundamentals, what is behind the Tiger Forex report. You write on the newsletter tab, you subscribe, folks, you get it for a month. It's $97. You get the webinar as well. If you're not happy with it, it's just something you're not using. Maybe you're not trading with the Forex enough. You cancel it, you get your money back. Please try it out. The webinar itself, the newsletter, you'll learn a tremendous amount. And in this market, man, uh, Forex, so important to what's going on across the globe right now. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we got a Fed day today. Uh, you want to kick things off on your thoughts on basically what to expect at 2 o'clock, 2.30, and maybe how that may impact some of the markets? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, it's pretty much built in that the Fed's going to do a quarter uh, point hike. Now, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, we've talked about this before, that they're going to spread out a quarter point on this meeting and then another quarter point on the next meeting. And then, you know, the mainstream media says that they're going to stop and then maybe even start cutting in the future. Uh, that would not make any sense, especially with what they've been doing. Um, you got to realize that we're raising a quarter point. The ECB just raised a half a point. They're going to raise another half a point. So what does that really mean, net net, with the markets? Well, now that the other central banks, especially Japan, that in another two months may raise their rates, you know, that has a big impact on what the Fed has been doing. You know, it counteracts everything that they've been doing for the past year. So I think that no matter, even though that the numbers come out, like with inflation, you know, you mentioned I saw earlier about the pullback, you know, it's at a six point whatever percent versus nine point whatever percent. The reality is, is inflation still out of control. It's just not accelerating at the rapid rate that it was before, you know. So and the reality is that the Fed, if what they had intended to do was to curb inflation by raising rates, if other central banks are raising rates, they have to continue raising rates at least to some degree. Because every time the other banks raise and we don't, that starts to negate what we've done. You know, so and I think that since they're the other banks are behind the curve and most likely don't have the bullets that we have, we're going to continue to raise rates into the rest of the year, no matter what. As long as the ECB, and especially if Japan raises in the spring, and God forbid there's a thought that they may raise again further, absolutely, I think we're going to see that the Fed is not going to stop raising rates. If anything, you could probably expect a quarter point at every single meeting throughout the rest of the year. Oof, you hear that one, folks? I like it. Boy, that's going to be an interesting market, man. And who knows? I, you know, I... At, at a bare minimum, Teddy, and I think I mentioned it to you last week, or I know we've been talking about it, and we've talked about that May meeting, we just get so much data in between now and then as well, that mm -hmm. to get ahead of it, as in I think the market case right now is much more closer to like the bull case in terms of everything going as maybe you'd hope or expect as a market participant versus mm -hmm. where the probabilities really line up, even for those, those three months of data that we get. And I know we get some of them before the March meeting. But, you know, we get January, February and March data and we're just coming out of January, man. And there's definitely some volatility. And it is sure. pretty amazing, like I mentioned earlier, that, you know, the bulls in that article was saying the bulls could be right because inflation could be abating because it's at six and a half percent. And in any other universe, you you know, you go six and a half percent. Hold on. Wait a can second. I, can so I add one more point about inflation, Tommy? Um, let's just say we're in a vacuum. OK and we stop raising rates after the next meeting, okay? If other central banks are raising rates, what does that mean? We're gonna have inflation because other currencies are gonna gain versus the dollar, which means imports become more expensive. And if imports are more expensive, wouldn't that be inflation? It's a great point. I was gonna ask you the question to lead you to talk about it towards the end of this because you had <laughs> talked about just them raising rates and not a lot of people are really having that type of that conversation saying, we well, have to compare it to the world and the comparison of rates across the world, because if they start raising rates, right, then what's going to happen? Demand is going to be for the higher rates over there. That's going to be demand for other currencies versus our currency. Our currency will be lower. And just like you said, we've been helped by the fact that we've had such a strong dollar. And if that starts trading lower, then inflation comes back. And I'm sure Chairman Powell knows that, even if they're not talking about that. Um, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And I'm sure he knows, you know, I, I'm not sure if you heard Kevin Hinks talking about legacy. I've talked, 
man, he's got a lot on the table right now, and it seems like there's a huge risk for him going early, and there's really not really a need to right now in terms of why why is there a need to um, even talk about that when what is the risk, right? Well, we have indicators Correct. maybe there's the lag. That's that's the other side of that. They don't want to be too late to the party when it's obvious it's it's too low, but boy, I'd like to hear somebody make that argument in terms of possibly them being too late, right? I mean, how can right. it be too late with where we are right now? Um sure. Jumping around to some of the currencies, Teddy. I mean, we've been chopping around a bit kind of in some of these areas, whether it's the dollar, the euro. We talked about the yen. Uh, what are some of the currencies that jump out at you, you want to talk about? OK, well, everything has been in a very sideways trade going into this Fed meeting and over the I mean, from the holidays into now, it's been a very tough trade in most of the currencies. I mean, you're, you're getting beaten up in the pound. You're getting beaten up in the Swiss. You know, I think that right now, if you want to look for where you're going to see volatility and maybe catch some good swings. It's the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar trade, believe it or not, just because that one seems to be a little bit freer and moving. You know, the pound is, I mean, talk about a tough trade. I mean, consolidating and trying to break out doesn't want to move. You know, there's, there's a lot of conflictions there. The euro obviously has been a grinding bull. You know, and the question is, is how much, how long can that one hold? You know, so and I think it, everyone's riding the ECB right now, um, but that's a tough one because the EU is in a lot of trouble financially. Their fundamentals, even if they keep on raising rates, their fundamentals are horrible over there. You know, I mean, when we go, we're in the first quarter now. I guarantee you, come six months from now, we're in the third quarter of next year. The EU is going to be struggling. I mean, when I say struggling, they're going to be in a lot of trouble, you know. So, I mean, the numbers are just progressively – inflation is not the only problem they have there. They have a lack of production, you know, and a lack of production in a, in a very industrial area such as the EU when you combine the countries – that's a big problem, especially with Germany, you know. So and, and another problem is, is that a lot of the production they have now is going towards the Ukraine conflict. So that doesn't bode well at all, you know, because who's paying yeah. for that? The taxpayers are paying for it and it's being funded through the bond market, too. You know, so that doesn't help out the population of the country, you know. And I think you're going to really start to see these things tap in to the EU, especially come the middle of the summer going to next fall, unless all of a sudden we have peace in the, you know, in the, uh, in that area, which I don't see that happening anytime soon. The data soon. can always change, right, Teddy? I Correct. don't know the probability, right. but the data can always change. I hear you. Correct. As in, yeah, it's uh, And as you know, Kevin Hinks, I don't know if you heard him, he was saying, you know, just in the Fed cutting, right? Well, things can change, mm -hmm. of course. You know, it's not impossible here, folks. They're but not going to cut. That's, yeah, that's, now, that's, a, that's, a, that's a false media pr prop. I can't. I hope I don't see what's happening to have them cutting. Let's put it that yeah. way. You know, in terms of right. man, it would take a tremendous amount of decimation in the markets, let alone what's happening with inflation. You well, know what would make them cut? You know, one nope. last point. The only way that they would cut is if Joe Biden comes in and says, "Why aren't you helping me out? We need to cut rates instead of raising rates." And I don't see that happening at all, or them listening nope. to him either. What do you got? You got a Blackhawks jersey on today? I do, I do. I love it. I'll get we're, my we're, Lightning we're, jersey. We're my heading Bruins into the, jersey you know, next it's, time. It's midway through the season now, you know, it's the break, All Star break, and the Hawks are finally starting to show some life. So that's we're at right. The bottom. We got to jump off, Teddy. I appreciate it as always, man. Have Thanks. a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, Thanks. folks. We'll Thanks. be right back after the break.